Hello everyone, welcome back to the final installment of Let's Really Go Thief 2. Today we're going to tackle Sabotage at Soul Forge. And I'll say right off the bat, the mission isn't ghostable, and you'll see why right off the bat. It's kind of irritating because I think you can actually Supreme Ghost the rest of the mission, but we're going to get yellow alerted on a watcher the second, literally the second, that we start the mission, and there's nothing we can do about it. But, such is life. Let's go on in. So, here's my save from the end of Masks. I'm going to skip the cutscene, as always. It's on the playlist separately. Here are our objectives. Sabotage Karis's plan by using the Guiding Beacon to draw the servants to the Mechanist Cathedral. First, you must learn how to use the Guiding Beacon. Don't let Karis find out what you are up to, or he won't trigger the servants. When the rest of your goals are accomplished, get outside before Karis seals up the cathedral and detonates the servants. Now here's something that's odd to me. The cutscene indicates that Garrett was most definitely already at the cathedral, but apparently we've got the opportunity to purchase loadout. Of course, there's no need for any of it. Now I'm going to hit play mission, and the watcher will go yellow immediately. I still prefer to avoid having it go red if I can, so I'm going to dash right underneath it, but like I said, nothing to do about it. It's going to immediately go yellow. Garrett! Garrett! Are you not? So there you go. No way to avoid that, and that's a ghost bus straight away. But the first thing I'm going to do is take the two bot corpses that are in this Bay A, where we are now, we map out this mission ourselves, and I'm gonna stash them in the shadows because a couple more robots come down here and they, when they spot the bodies, they think that I killed them and they flip out, they become harder to sneak around and it'll tack up our bodies discovered stat. I don't want any of that. Additionally, it doesn't end up being a supreme violation because we can use the bodies and they get consumed in the use, so that's the first thing I'm going to do while Karis is ranting at me. So, once again we are met, and the woman of the woods, didn't thou come here together? But lo, how easily evil is felled when the righteous hold the mace. Thou art transparent to me, Garrett. Even now I can see thou seekest to stop me, but there is naught you can do. My chain will resist all manner of infiltrations, even from a skilled man such as thyself. The servants hearken to my instructions only, then even now await my commands. Maybe I've waited over much. Okay, thine intrusion has been my cue to begin now the final preparations. May the world be ready for the builder's arrival. I fear you not, Garrett, that I have dispatched some of the builder's children to intercept you. Thou too will perish and trouble me no more. So I'll put one of the bodies in the machine because we'll be using it there later. I stash the other one behind it. This is the rolling machine. Instructions. Place source material into basin on top of machine. Insert steel plate into chute on side of machine. Push button to activate machine. Products will emerge at other end. Soul Forge is another very low ambient light mission, but the good news is it's not quite zero like some of the others. This elevator goes to Factory Bay C. This one to Factory Bay B. And we're in the Southern Apps. Sweet. We'll just keep going. There's equipment all over the place, but we don't need any of it. To the left is Factory Bay D, to the right is Bay E, and the Plans Room. We want to hit the Plans Room first, and when we're going to the Plans Room from the south, going this way is a viable option. Anytime we're coming back, though, we'll have to take the route through Bay E, because there's 
no good way to sneak back without taking damage. So a couple of robots are heading to Bay A. They'll take up patrol there. Even though the Watcher never actually red alerted, it's... I think the mission script assumes that that Watcher sees you, and the Watcher's not actually connected to anything else in the mission. But, you know, the Watcher is a Watcher, so if it spots you, it is, at minimum, a ghost bust for itself. So, we have five vine arrows, which is more than enough. We'll want to hit the grate here. Take advantage of the extra power vine arrows have above rope arrows. Just listen when you land to make sure nothing alerts to you. And this is the problem. There's no way down from here while retrieving our arrow without taking damage. If you creep through here, you could avoid even first alerts from the watcher in the corner. But you have to creep nice and slow. Once you're clear of the window, though, you can speed up because even this patch of light is actually a perfect shadow. So we'll descend here. That's a blind robot. So just make sure you go down silently. All the way to the floor. Nothing heard me. This is good. Now I'm going to go ahead and break into storage room 2. Which I'll have to lock pick open. There are no, no pickpockets, no loot in this mission. Because I already know what I need. Both to get all the the secrets, of which there are four, five if you count the quote scroll, and the guiding beacon itself. We need a signal bolt to make the guiding beacon, so I'll grab that. We need one steel plate for the beacon, so I'll grab that. We need... A gauge and a bantam node to make the beacon, so I'll grab one gauge and one bantam node, if I can find it. Oh, there's at least one in here. There it is. And I believe that's it, as far as the beacon goes. Let's see, put the signal bolt in the bellowing machine. Put the stage one piece in the rolling machine, which uses a steel plate. Make a regulating round with your gauge and bantam node. Put the regulating round in the stage two piece in the linking machine. Put the stage three piece... Okay, we're done. As far as the guiding beacon goes. Now for the quote scroll, which I'll show you how to get, although I won't canonically get it. We need five extra steel plates. So one, two... I didn't want the spring wiring. Two, three, four, five. Now, for the three secret recipes, we'll start with the flash mine. For that, we need one acidic mixture and one quicklime mixture. We need an iron chassis, which I don't think we'll have to go to storage room one to get. For the explosive device, we need Another quick lime mixture and an iron chassis from number one. And we need another phantom node. And for the flash bomb, we need an acidic mixture and a roll of spring wiring. So I actually could have just taken it. Oh well. And one extra steel plate. So let's go over to storage room one and get the rest of our supplies. Oh, and one other thing. 
I'm gonna grab one other signal bolt. Because to Supreme Ghost, the plans room, we need to have a few things to stack. That storage room too. We can get most of the goodies in the plans room plans room itself. Who killed that fool Trot? Was it he? Or that yeah, woman of the woods? It amused me to learn he'd been murdered. He was but a bumbling pawn who thought himself king. He provided me with material to create servants, but he was useless for stopping the pagans. Or the... So here's storage room one. We need... Let me see. For the flash mine, I just need an iron chassis. I need an iron chassis and a bantam node for the sunburst device. And that's it. Something spotted me though. So, two iron chassis and a bantam node. Okay, there's another big fella. Alright, <clears throat> I've got all my supplies. I will have to return that extra signal bolt to storage room 2 when I'm done, but that's no big deal. I think we're out of range, but I'll listen to make sure he doesn't alert. Let's keep going on through here. And we have arrived at the plans room. You can pick this door open, no problem. Once you're inside with the door closed behind you, there's only one thing to worry about. While we're in here, we can't make noise because there's a stationary mechanist over here. Let me go free, go free. Now, check this out. Kara says, Pay more attention. Really? Look around. A jerk. I want to call it out here just so you can see it because it's so dark in there. We'll read a note later that explains what happened to the mechanists in this mission, but you see they're talking like servants, they have servant masks on, and if you look at that, it was probably a quick conversion because there's blood dripping down from this mechanist's face. I only noticed the blood on my last practice run, so I wanted to make sure you all had noticed it as well. So here's what we're going to do. First, we need to read this papyrus. It actually is an objective. To Brother Kelsus regarding the proper usage of the Guiding Beacon. As thou knowest, the servants are controlled by the eight signal towers located on the roof of the cathedral. Normally, these signal towers communicate instructions that I myself issue unto the servants from within my protective chamber. However, when the time comes to modify the servants, we will use these signal towers to transmit the guiding beacon instead. In my wisdom, I have made it easy to do this without necessitating difficult adjustments to the signal towers. Firstly, thou must get the guiding beacon. Only one hath been manufactured, and I am controlling access to it by keeping it always with me inside my protective chamber. Since thou art a loyal and industrious follower of Karis, if I am unavailable, thou hast my permission to manufacture a new one. The blueprints are stored in the plans room. Bringeth then the guiding beacon to the signal room, which is on the third floor of the northern apse. There thou wilt see the machine that produces the signal used by the signal towers. This machine hath two slots, signal slot A and signal slot B. At all times, the device which transmits my instructions must be kept connected to signal slot A. However, thou canst connect the guiding beacon to signal slot B. Do this at thy leisure, for twill not interrupt my control over the servants. Yet another step is required to activate the guiding beacon thou hast prepared. Only when thou art certain thou hast my consent, thou mayest take this final step. Go to the signal towers. At the base of each thou shalt find a lever. Flip the lever from A to B. This will cause that signal tower to transmit the signal in signal slot B instead of signal slot A. The servants will hear the guiding beacon and begin their journey back to me. Here at Soulforge Cathedral. 
When they all arrive, thou must immediately switch the signal towers back to A so that I can give the servants further instructions, as the servants cannot hear my instructions when the signal towers are set to B. Note, it is possible to expedite the process, as thou may recall from our discussion of the principles of redundant signal potency. My calculations indicate that thou needest only to set seven of the eight signal towers to B in order for that signal to be now the dominant one. Your revered leader, Karis. This is just what I was looking for. Now I've got a real plan. So keep that papyrus with you for now. We'll use it for stacking. And here are the guiding beacon blueprints. Go ahead and read that. Blueprints, guiding beacon. Obtain a signal bolt and a steel plate from storage room two. Put the signal bolt through the bellowing machine in factory base C. The stage one piece will be manufactured. Transform the stage one piece with the rolling machine in factory bay A. The stage two piece will be manufactured. Manufacture a regulating round. See separate blueprints. Merge the stage two piece and the regulating round with the sealing machine in factory bay D. The stage three piece will be manufactured. Put the stage three piece through the fusing machine in factory bay E. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's look at the other blueprints we can find in here. We'll need a uh, we'll need the key to do that. Of course, I'm going to reload and not actually take these blueprints because returning the key to that metal shelf will most definitely alert our mechanist friend. But let's just open all these up so we can read all the flavor text in this admittedly pretty awesome mission. I like Soul Forge. I don't understand the people who hate it. Oh, scouting orb blueprints. Blueprints, scouting orb. Obtain a bolt of spring wiring, a bantam node, and a canister of acidic mixture. Put the spring wiring and the acidic mixture through the fusing machine in factory bay E. A flux spheroid will be manufactured. Put the flux spheroid and the bantam node through the bellowing machine in factory bay C. Comparative power ingestion rates of immobile security units, a concise study of watchers and sentries by friend Gorick. Abstract. For the sentry, the act of focusing upon any foe or the casting of projectiles, large or small, is known to cause said sentry to swiftly consumeth its fuel resources in abundance. Therefore, sentries in most instances have been placed in conjunction with watchers, whose workings doth require comparatively insignificant fuel resources, whilst demonstrating superior capabilities in the detection of trespassers. Whilst this pairing doth seem to create a seamless overlap of function and power ingestion, in truth the inherent delay of the Watcher hath been known to compromise the security value of the Sentry. This study, then, seeketh to combine the advantages of both Watcher and Sentry, indeed to create a Sentry innovation which hath the faux discrimination abilities of a Watcher, yet consumeth fuel resources of comparatively small quantities summation of findings. Thus far our efforts have focused on the management of sentry power ingestion levels. We have created sentries that remain functional at all times without the need for refuelment. However, they must then be fueleth constantly from a power resource external to themselves. Soulforge has proved to be an ideal research area for testing these sentries, since power resources there be aplenty. Unhappily, we have made little progress toward a model that functioneth extensively outside such convenient circumstances. We'll see those later, they're the spider bots. Here we've got mine blueprints. Blueprints, mine. Contain an, obtain an iron chassis, a metal plate, and a canister of quicklime mixture. Process the iron chassis and the quicklime mixture with the amalgamating machine in factory bay D. A mine bulb will be manufactured. Merge the mine bulb and the metal plate with the sealing machine in factory bay D. Regulating round blueprints. Blueprints. Regulating round. Obtain a gauge and a bantam node from storage room 3. Integrate the gauge and the bantam node by using the linking machine in factory bay D. Alrighty. And flare blueprints. Blueprints. Flare. Obtain a metal plate, a canister of quicklime mixture, and a canister of acidic mixture. Process the quicklime mixture and the acidic mixture with the amalgamating machine in factory bay B. A canister of flare mixture will be manufactured. Transform the flare mixture with the rolling machine in factory bay A. 
So ultimately, what those those recipes all work, and three of the secrets in this mission are discovering other recipes that you can kind of deduce if you compare those to each other. But you have to solve for yourself the way to make a flash mine, an explosive charge, and a flash bomb. So, next, I want to get over on this end, and we got to do some object stacking. So, I'm going to put the guiding beacon blueprints down first. They're the hardest thing to jump straight on top of, but it works. And then, once you're atop of those, drop the papyrus. And then from there, drop one of your signal bolts. And from here, we should be able to mantle up. Beautiful. Now creep over into this window. Stay completely quiet. Glad that Garrett didn't crash down. Hit that switch to open the hatch in the center of the room. And now we'll be back really at the very end of the mission to close everything back up, so I'll just leave it open for now since nothing patrols through here anyway. You're supposed to use a rope arrow over a vine arrow over there, but then you have to either use a moss arrow or alert the sentry when you drop down to the bookcase. I find that little stack is easier. So then this room is going to be very dark. Sorry about that. But if you move over here, you get credit for the first of four slash five secrets. I say slash five because the mission stats only say four, but the quote scroll will bump it up to five out of four. We'll be skipping the quote scroll canonically, but I'll show you how to get it. So, Northern Apps. You have to get into this room in order to open the way to the Northern Apps. There's a book here. The New Scripture of the Master Builder, draft page 41. To assist his calculations, Karis drafted a map of the city, and now he saw the circles he had drawn and was pleased. Nowhere was there a place that would be uncleansed by the necrotic mutox, and its effects would extend beyond the city. The circles conjoined in the center, the very heart of the city, the same city that had spurned Karis and denounced the Builder. Karis knew from this sign that all was to be as he had seen. Karis spake, Master Builder, Karis will not fail you as the precursors did. Where an entire civilization denied thee and was felled by thy hand, Karis shall do thy will. Thank thee for directing Karis to their ashes, to discover their error and thy gifts they misused, that Karis now uses as thou intended. Karis hath built for thee thy children, the successors of the human race, and now by thy hand Karis shall wipe away the plague that we are, that thy children may last eternal in purity. But the builder spoke to Karis then, saying, O Karis, thou art truly faithful as thou sayest. I give thee now this command, that thou shalt remain thyself alive when all about thee turns to holy rust. When my paradise has come, thou shalt have a place beside me among my children. And Karis fell to his knees and cried out, Thank thee, Master Builder, thy will shall be done. Crazy. So head over this direction. The zero ambient light is a problem, I know. But when you get to the other end, you'll slip out into a new room. It's really dark in here, but... I keep my bearings by looking at the light over at Karis' desk. And then find a switch on the west wall. Just to the left of that switch <coughs> is the ladder that it opens. So be, be careful not to make noise getting off this ladder either. I say that as I very loudly land. So let me just make sure the mechanist didn't hear anything. Didn't. Good. So I'm gonna leave my stack there, like I said. I'm gonna leave everything as it is. Come back at the very end because we need the northern apps open to adjust the signal towers. So once they're all adjusted and I'm on my way out, I'll come back and reset the plans room for Supreme. Let's look at the new objectives. 
Follow the guiding beacon blueprints to manufacture a new one for yourself. Connect the guiding beacon you made to signal slot B. Adjust at least seven of the eight signal towers to use signal B, the guiding beacon, instead of signal A, Karis's instructions. This fifth objective? I don't know of any way to fail it. But maybe there's a way somewhere. Obvious, it should be obvious, if you saw my last playthrough, which signal tower we'll skip. We will skip the turret room. No one has ever managed to ghost it, so... That's, that's a no-brainer. That's the one we skip. We'll hit the other seven. Alright. So we need to head north and take the west passage back down to the factory base. Just be careful, there's a lot of uh, traffic up here. You hear a spider bee, a spider mech. This will be the first one I've seen this playthrough. There are two more and a mechanist, so... <laughs> Let's just wait them out. The spiders are not your friends. If one of those spots you, you're basically hosed because they look pretty harmless compared to the regular robots now, but if one of them spots you, you'll quickly discover that it's way too fast to run away from. Let all the traffic pass you by. Oh, they're coming back. I guess we'll wait a little longer. Those guys are moving on. As you can see, we've got a... Look about you, Garrett. I built these machines, you see, and in turn, they produced the Builder's children. The necrotic mutox, the servants, everything. Tis my gift to the Builder, Soul Forge Cathedral, and all it contains. Twill be the very center of the Builder's paradise. Surely this strikes wonder into your heart. got an expanse of tile to cross that's why you kind of want to wait until the place is empty which doesn't take too long you just have to be a little patient make sure no one heard that looks like we're good we will move on Now we're in the, that was the northern apse with its passage to the upper areas. We're in the fluid vapor interchange. We'll be using this to sneak into Bay D later on. For now, we should be able to just creep through here without getting spotted. Beautiful. Now you need another big opening here because you need to creep by, creep along this wall to avoid getting a comment from the robot standing in fluid vapor interchange looking out here.
And once you get to these shadows, you're essentially clear. You should never save outside a good hiding spot. Just because there are so many, uh, you know, whole mission patrollers who walk long routes over the entire thing. Like I hear a mechanist coming right now. We'll just wait till he or she, don't know which, gets past. Oh, there's another one. So we're going to Bay B first. Actually, we're going to Bay C first. But doesn't really matter because the two of them are connected. Take a good long walk back towards Bay A. You can follow Victoria's Vine to find your way. The whole mission is now covered, so be be careful of that. I don't want they be or what they see. Let that spider get past too. I think the spider might have first alerted. I'm pretty sure that's what that clicking noise meant, so. Wait till it gets past two. Should be good to move to baby now. They see. <clears throat> Let's creep over and head up this elevator. Do be careful of the simple fact that you can get pinched riding the elevators up. I got burned by that on my practice run. Two things to read in here. Instructions. Place source material or materials into funnel on top of machine. Products will emerge at other end. And this is the bellowing machine. Um, before I leave, I should send the elevator back down. So you see, we can go right across into baby, which we'll end up doing, but there is a spider mech in the room in the middle, so we have to be careful. I'm gonna read the other journal in here first. One of the children fetched me today by order of Father Karras to visit him at the chamber in which he now cloisters. It was quite unexpected, as was the conversation with which followed. I was able to speak with Father Karras through the slits in the door. He ordered me to find him some new street people to convert into servants. Respectful, I ventured to ask him wherefore, since our supply of necrotic mutox gas containers is gone, and we have no need for mindless slaves when the builder's children are such efficient workers. He told me that the children could not manipulate some things with their appendages as well as a human might, and I was greatly shocked to hear Father Karras make such a comparison. Nevertheless, I pressed on and inquired why did he not simply ask us, his devout followers, to perform for him whatever tasks he might require of such a nature. At this, Father Karras became quite furious and bellowed at me through the door, demanding that I comply with his wishes, and asking who I believed would be suitable fodder for servants, if not beggars and the like. 
I was much afeard at his assailment, but then he stopped quite suddenly, as though some truth had just occurred to him, and without further explanation bid me never mind to go back about my normal business. I should like to do so, but t'was not long ago that this transpired, and already I have been called off to some new special duty by another missive from one of the children. I shall finish this account when I return. Friend Manus. So there we see when Karis finally snapped and started turning his own followers into servants, too. And it was obviously a sort of rapid conversion, as their faces are still bleeding. Having the masks grafted on, or whatever it is Karis does. So anyway, always be on alert, because the spider has spotted me numerous times in my practice runs. The only thing we need to do in base E is get up here and drop our signal bolt in. Of course, ladders have never been Garrett's strong suit, so you have to be careful about that. There's a good chance the spider can hear that, so you want to watch and make sure it didn't. So grab your stage one piece, and we'll cross over to Bay B. There, you heard those clicks. That's a first alert when you're dealing with a spider mech. So you want to just move very carefully through this room. There is some metal flooring over here. I'll just wait till it's back is turned and then go around the metal flooring. Seems like that might be easier. and call this elevator up because we'll need it. What do we have here? Why choose to side in villainy, Garrett? Instructions. Place source materials into basin on side of machine, flip lever to activate machine, products will emerge from two. By the side of the witch woman. With you as aid, my plans could have been so much further along. Hmm. It would have been most advantageous. Ah yes, this is the amalgamating machine. This is the one where you really have to be careful. Not to alert the spider back. We're out of visual range now, but you're not when you're up on the ladder. There are two things to do here. First, you want to put an acidic mix into one. That's exactly what you can't afford to do. If you drop it to the side of the machine like that, you're hosed. Put an acidic mix into one of the chambers. Put a quick lime mix into the other. Uh, 
head up top and flip the lever. Watch the spider, I think it's gonna come after me. Nope, good. Oh yeah, and then flip it again to reopen it. Head to the front of the machine, and we have a flare mixture. Watch it to make sure it's still good. Excellent. Now put the flare mixture in one side and one of our iron chassis in the other. Get up top and flip the lever. twice, and you'll notice we have found our second of four secrets. We've just manufactured a flash mine, which we have no use for, but I like to have credit for the secrets. Now, we're still not done here. This will be our most used uh, secret bay. We need to put a jug of quick lime mix, our other quick lime mix, into one side. Just as soon as he turns around. He makes me very nervous. I can't wait to be done in here. And our other iron chassis in the other side. Head up and flip the switch twice. What this gives us is a mine bulb, which we'll need to use elsewhere. So with that, we're done. So head down the elevator. You just kind of have to hope that your timing is good. You don't run into any controllers. We need to sneak into Factory Bay A, where we started. Thankfully, because we hid the bodies in the beginning, the robots should just be patrolling. They shouldn't be on high alert. Wait till you hear it walking away. There are two patrolling in there now. Just get down to these shadows. Then you can creep across the room pretty easy. As long as one of them doesn't actually bump into you. We need to head over to the rolling machine. So you'll remember I've already got one bot corpse inside the machine. So I'm going to load a steel plate into the chute on the side, which can be hard to see, but you can use the shadow to suss out where, where it is. Your plate has to drop into the chute, not to either side, not on top of it. The best way to do that is really to step out in front of it like this. I think it's in now. Let's hope so. I should be able to hit the button on the side and the corpse should just disappear. As should the steel plate. Let's see if that happened. It did. Excellent. So let's do the same with the other corpse. <sighs> Conveniently 
started out with. Oh, nope. 